Hey everybody, I'm here with Tony and I'm super, super, super stoked to be back with him and talking about really interesting topics <laughs> <laughs> and um, topics that'll get me demonetized because ever since I've been doing videos with Tony, my channel has been going through some, some I don't know, I'm interesting using stages. using your channel now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I don't even know what the topic is of this talk, to be honest with you. So I think I'll just let it flow because there's so much knowledge <laughs> that can come out. And Tony is doing readings for you guys with extra special prices for people on my channel. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. So he's doing healing sessions, energy healing sessions, readings, entity attachment, uh, removals, um, inner child work. So his Page is going to be in the description box below this video, so check it out. And um, now is the time, 2020 is the time. If you wanna get rid of anything, if you wanna change anything, this is certainly the energy to do it in with um, everything that's going on on the planet within ourselves as well. Now is the time to really get the work done that you've been pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and pushing out. And we're here for you. <laughs> Tony, are you really jealous of Russell Brand? I watched your live oh, yesterday. Come on. Come on. Russell Brand. I watched Brand. your live oh yesterday. Oh my God, where do we start? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, part of my, my YouTube channel is about exposing uh, new age uh, BS and fake spiritual gurus and uh, all that kind of stuff. And <clears throat> Russell Brand's been on my radar for a long time. Um, we fell out, not that I know him, but metaphorically, we fell out a long time ago. He started uh, looking like he was siding with us uh, truthers in the alternative media, but then he was then he was going back and telling people to vote. And um, there was a, there's a famous artist in the UK called Rolf Harris, who uh, was outed as a paedophile and he was making excuses for him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't played, even hear about that. What yeah, happened? yeah, there's a... There, in, in the UK, when we were kids growing up, there's this Australian artist mm -hmm. and, called Rolf Harris, and it, it, all, all the kids used to love him, a little bit like Jimmy Savile. Do you know about Jimmy Savile? Yes. Yeah, Jimmy Savile, that. Jim will fix it. You write to him, he used mm -hmm. to, yeah, horrible, right? But yeah, Rolf Harris was one um, that came out about three or four years ago, also being given an MBE by the Queen. Another one that was given a, there goes your dog. Yeah. <laughs> right on cue, <laughs> just as we get into some deep stuff. Um, the dog lost the bone. He and, lost the bone. And now, he, he buried the bone in my apartment. I have no idea where to find it. And it's a big bone, it's like this big. I have no idea what he did with it. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Rolf Harris was outed uh, about five or six years ago. Yeah, she did some prison time and uh, Russell Brand came out and was basically saying we should take it easy on him. We shouldn't be so hard on him. We should try and have understanding. And I was like, what the hell? Bearing in mind, this guy had already played um, the child catcher out of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang um, in the 2012 Olympics. And of course, you know, I was calling all this out um, a few years ago and the backlash sorry to say, particularly from women, you know, mm -hmm. was in, intense. They, mm -hmm. they hated it. They hated that I was calling this guy out. And um, as I said on well, my I video- I Russell Brand Yeah, too. of it's course, like, you, you know, know, he's got the Jesus uh, look, he's got the chiseled features and the long hair. No, and... but he, he also tackled topics and issues, I thought anyways, in the beginning, yeah. that were, that were, a little fringy. <laughs> well, it's truth mixed with lies. It's yeah. obf obfuscation of truth. They mm -hmm. have to give you, uh, I call it the dump in the punch bowl. So they'll give you 70, 80% truth. Yeah. And then the dump in the punch, punch bowl is, yeah. you know, just give pedophiles sympathy or just go and vote, stay in the, the illusion of authority and uh, governance and that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it just, it just, I mean, the eyes, how can you look at his eyes and think that this guy, he's just got like dark, like psychotic eyes. Yeah, but he's he's had a lot. I mean, he's been through a lot. He's, he's, and I mean, he he had that whole drug addiction. Are you that he got devil's up. advocate? Yeah. <laughs> or is it because you still like no, him? No, because I'm wondering, I'm wondering, you know, what if people don't know that they're being used by dark forces? 
Is it that then, you know, how can we? Um, I think they know. I think they know what type, what team they're batting for. Um, you know, how can you how can you not know when you look at people like Lady Gaga because and they, they, they really Oprah believe. Winfrey? <laughs> well, I think there's they there's several things the going on. They, for humanity. There's, there's, yeah. there's, you know, there's a lot of them are being controlled, which we probably get into and yeah. I speak about is you know, a lot of negative entities are interfacing with these people and mm -hmm. kind of running the show and controlling them to some extent, um, as well as AI and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they, there is a satanic cult yeah, and is. That, that is operating. And the the way they get um, through this is through deception. That's yeah. that's their, their greatest weapon is through deception. And they're very, very clever. They're very, very good at it. They're very, I mean, you look at politicians, like how often they say something and you can almost like really believe what they're saying. It's all NLP, like they touch, they touch, touch their chest when they're speaking, mm -hmm. that's, that's very, and as particularly with the new ages, you'll hear them speak very softly. Russell Brand will speak very softly. Eckhart Tolle. Like, <laughs> which is, which is, you're going to sleep, you're feeling sleepy, because they're putting people in that kind of um, trance-like yeah. state whereby the subconscious mind becomes very suggestible. Mm -hmm. And then when they hit you with the propaganda and the, you know, the dump in the punch bowl, mm -hmm. you're just going to take it in. And then that plays out as a, as a belief system. system. Um, so we can't we can't underestimate how clever they are at deceiving and um, not only in this dimension but in the fourth dimension as well. And we see that with certain light beings that are posing as light beings. Anyway, I call them false white light beings, mm -hmm. like uh, archangels and friendly alien races, Saint Germain, all these different energies that people archetypes. are working yeah. archetypes yeah they're working for um what i refer to as this um, false god matrix mm -hmm. um, which is overlaying um our true connection to to way beyond um this 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 falseness that that we're operating in mm -hmm. and this this false god matrix is consuming everyone's energy through religion least not religion you've got billions of people that are praying to this deity yeah. and uh you know all the kind of rituals that go with that the breaking of the bread and mm -hmm. the, the you know all this all this energy is going to this false god yes even when you um give your power away in terms of this is something that i'm going deeper with at the moment in my own understanding or inner standing mm -hmm. in terms of when you kind of uh, rely on the universe to to manifest things for you, and what what it is is we we are, we're basically we're so powerful. We have the universe within us. We 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 have those creative creative abilities within us, and we underestimate our own power of what we can actually create and manifest, mm -hmm. and when we're constantly giving our power away to this false god um we're, we're kind of abstaining our own power and our own gifts and our mm -hmm. own wonderful and abilities, abilities. Yeah. yeah so we really need to i think part of what we're going back to is <clears throat> really in a standing on a deep level and remembering that we're actually just a fractal of the universe incarnate yes. having a human experience, experience. And uh, this is what they don't want you to know. So they yes. want you to keep praying to the God. They want you to keep. They're you know, using wishing. us. They're using our collective consciousness to manifest whatever it is that they desire because they know that we're manifestors. And so if we're all focused on the same thing, consciously or unconsciously, it doesn't really matter at that point. Our consciousness is like a laser beam that comes together and manifests whatever they, they want. Hence media, propaganda, um, public rituals like the Olympic Games, where they played out this whole scenario that I'm not going to name, otherwise it's, my channel will. <laughs> but um, it's 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 crazy because another thing that we see in um, kinesiology, applied kinesiology, when you do the muscle testing, people lose energy when they're looking at the cross, when they're looking at statues of Buddha, when they're looking yeah. at these religious symbols, their body loses energy. Why? Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a lie. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 huge, really. What we what we we go so far beyond this uh, 
fake construct that we're all giving our power away to these entities, to these beings, to these mm-hmm. deities. And you can imagine this this false god that wants to control. He's, he's te- this false god is terrified of, yes. of losing his grip and control. And all these deities and false white light beings are doing his bidding for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's just there sucking up all our energy. energy. And, and it's worship energy. And it's um, also the energy of or the belief in authority yes. that um, others and particularly government uh, have power over us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all that is being siphoned off. Mm-hmm. And uh, what that's doing is that's keeping us in a slave mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, when, of course, authority is just a, a massive illusion, you know, the, that it's the number one thing that we need to understand mm. to move out of this condition that we're in is the, the fact that no uh, being or, or human has any right to tell you what to do, what to do. how to live your life. Yeah. You know, all rules uh, yeah. and laws are man-made laws. You yeah. know, they don't exist in nature. <laughs> you're born like with the grace of the universe. As soon yes. as you're born, you have your, you're endowed with your rights and your gifts, uh, sorry, your rights and your freedoms. Yeah. No, no man or woman in a dark suit can, tell, can you. tell you, at least not tell you what to put in your body. Right. I mean, you own your body. We, you we had that body. conversation where I said like, um, it seems so strange to me at some point waking waking up realizing how am i living on this planet how am i being a universal being and i'm living under the construct and the ideas of people that are long dead and gone like it it didn't make sense to me but everything that we're living under from the borders of our countries through through collective cultural conditioning <laughs> it's 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 so heavy and you're so entrapped in it and mm. enmeshed in it and it's actually it's not true yeah absolutely yeah and most... a lot of these long dead and gone people they even said while they were alive you know they would do things differently right? yeah 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 most traditions are you know people refer back to as particularly with my work around the chakras and they say yeah but they must be true because uh, you know monks were talking about it a thousand years ago or you know some guru in india 500 years ago was talking about chakras we have to remember that the enslavement of of humanity goes back eons right Right. and these are all just constructs uh false paradigms Mm -hmm. under this uh false god matrix that we're in and so when you look at traditions most traditions are built on bs like Mm -hmm. I lived in Asia um, for a good few years and I was teaching English to uh, Koreans and Japanese mainly. And, um, you know, they're very, very much brainwashed and subservient and uh, their whole tradition is based around what the elders think, what their teachers think, what their parents think. Mm -hmm. And they would make decisions on their lives and futures based on what their elders would say or their teacher and their I used to have uh, lessons and I'd say, um, so what are you doing? And they'd say, oh, I'm studying economics. And uh, and I said, well, how's that going? They go, I hate it. Mm. And I say, so, so why are you doing it then? Yeah. Well, my teacher, my, my parents, you know, they've said uh, that I should do it. And so you have generations and generations of people doing what other people are telling them to do. Um, and again, moving away from their own sovereignty as as as, as a human being, and uh, so 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 much of what we see in tradition and culture is different forms of mind control, and uh, to keep us all in that tiny that that, that tiny perception deception. Yeah, Rudolf Steiner brought that up. He talked about how our evolutionary pathway at first was determined by us being in a fractal universe, so to speak. So each generation was an exact copy of the past but they took it one step further they took it one step further into consciousness and so it was perfectly natural that people would do the same thing that their parents did but then in the mid 1800s there was a shift because apparently according to rudolf steiner there was a war in heaven the bad side lost we're experiencing now the manifestation of this whole thing coming out to play and uh, the bad side (laughs) (laughs) and um so anyways he was saying that then it shifted and it wasn't anymore about doing what your fathers did in order to advance in consciousness it was about becoming individuals and completely 
leaving all that in the past, like letting each experience stand for itself. And um, that's where we're at now. And that's what we're trying to do, but they're trying to still keep this, it, it keeping us trapped in um, cultural conditionings or the teachings of the father has turned into the dark. Mm. That's what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. They, they, they want everyone thinking the same. same. Yeah, just same opinions. And uh, if, if they can keep your, they don't care what you believe in as long mm. as you believe in something rigidly, mm -hmm. like religion, Buddhism, whatever it might be, because then you come with a set of guidelines, a rule book, you know, i.e. the Bible or whatever. And, and so it, it entraps your consciousness, even in politics, if you rigidly believe in politics and government, mm -hmm. they've got you, yes. you know, so it, it's moving out of all these mental constructs and paradigms that, that keep our consciousness boxed up. Yeah. Um, and so then if you move out of those, you're just free to experience yes. whatever comes your way yes. with, uh, and you can discern as you go. Um, but as a, as a true sovereign being, and uh, that's what they're terrified of. They, they want you in one of these false God matrix programs. They don't care which one you're in, nope. as long as you're in one of them. Um, you know, even with, even with like, I don't know, football supporters, you know, you, you have like some men that they're so, their whole lives are all revolve around football, football. and rigidly, you know, it's <laughs> like, that's it. They've got you, you know, yeah. like, I'm not saying that people can't enjoy these things, but it's the attachment. It's that um, my identity is this. Yeah. And that's where it starts getting problematic. And in an ayahuasca ceremony, and I know what you think about those, but this one was a good one. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't have some great experiences. Yeah, this one was... <laughs> but just on that, before you tell that story, yeah. when, no, tell me, tell the story first. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll... So um, um, it, during this ayahuasca ceremony, Mother Ayahuasca or the spirit of ayahuasca, I believe, well, We'll, we'll talk about that. But anyways, um, I got the information where it was everything we think, everything we understand or think we understand, even this discussion that we're having right now, it's a set of concepts. It's just a set of bubbles or ideas. And the way it was shown to me, it was like a, um, you know, those old Dia slides that people used to do in the 70s, 80s, like take pictures and then have these Dia nights. So it was like all these concepts and ideas that were just Dia slides and they were all pulled out of my consciousness. Just, oh, look at that. And looking through reality, through this slide, through this coloring, this filter. And then it was just thrown away, just like that. And I realized in that moment, oh my gosh, everything I'm holding on to, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's not me. It's not who I am. It's not that awareness that I am or a part of or what you name it, every single concept we have. And then it just went and all these concepts were flying all over the place and just flying out. And then there was one that I didn't let go of. And that was my, um, because then it starts to get scary. And I understand people because um, all of a sudden something shifted and it started for me because it was something that I was very attached to. And that was my concept of Christianity uh, and Jesus see. Christ of Savior. And yeah. not a uh, Savior, you know, in this born again Christian way, but when you're lost in the depths of these experiences, you want some good things on your side. Mm. <laughs> and so that was my shining lights, right? The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and this concept and idea. And it kind of wiggled at it and then it just left it. Okay, mm. you're not ready to let it go. We'll leave it with you. Mm. And um, so I was fine with that. And, but I realized for myself that even that is a concept mm. and that the pureness of being that we all are, it's, it's so beyond everything, everything, mm. everything. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a magnificent moment, but I know what you're thinking. So go ahead. No, I'm, go I'm ahead. Not, <laughs> listen, I, I mean, I, I've had some w wonderful experiences myself with, myself with different forms of psychedelics. All I'm saying to people is that it, it takes you into that. It can take you. It, it can take you into that false uh, astral God matrix mm -hmm. where they'll give you, they'll give you a bit of sugar, right? Yeah. They'll give you a bit of sugar because they need that. Otherwise, no one would do it. But mm -hmm. then there'll be some other stuff attachments yeah. that can come in, and uh, because when you smash your consciousness to pieces in yeah. that way, you're you're also opening yourself up. up to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, so, so you that's... definitely need preparation. You should have a good guide. And 
you need the knowledge that I feel that things have changed over the last 30, 40 years that psychedelics have become this hit, you know, it's the energy around it. And it's to totally changed from what it was in the beginning. So that needs to be definitely known. Yeah, uh, we influence just as much as we're influenced by it's it's <laughs> it's a two way street. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it, 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 it has been heavily promoted um, a lot over the last few decades, particularly with the likes of Terence McKenna, who, mm. from my research anyway, was a CIA agent. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Fill me in because <laughs> I loved his writing. <laughs> yeah, of course. Or, like anyone mainstream, like really mainstream, you, you you know, I'm not saying that there's no one on our side. I don't yeah. want to, you yeah. know, there, there are, but um, I can see why they want people into psychedelics doing what I do with the, the energy clearing. And uh, I've said mm -hmm. before, I've had people come to me and they've said, Tony, I, I did, uh, I was feeling fine on the Friday. I took ayahuasca on Saturday. Monday, I've got suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, my mind's racing and stuff like that. So, um, and, it, and it just takes people um, into that astral domain, which is, um, which is really a bit of a trap, to be honest yes. with you. Um, I, I feel totally like, uh, you know, many of the much of the stuff that resides there is is working for this false god, god matrix, matrix and uh you know different beings masquerading and even not masquerading you yeah. know some people just see them straight out i remember i had uh before i was aware of all this um i'm getting goosebumpy <laughs> no th th this <laughs> is this is a really uh, uh, uh going back years now I, I um i took some some acid with a friend well, I say a friend, and uh, there was always something quite off about his energy. I couldn't put my finger on it, but he was also, he's a, always the sort of person that would let you down at the last minute. And there was just something, something not right. But because um, we were living abroad, it was like, because we were both from the UK, we yeah. kind of stuck together a little bit, but, and he was kind of awake, but there was something always off. And um, one night we, we, we took this acid and, um, I remember I looked at him and I saw a demon in him, mm -hmm. like literally read everything. Yeah. And I was sitting there on the stairs and I was looking at him and I was like, I must have been staring at him like this because he clocked me looking at him that way yeah. and started getting really defensive. Like, what the fuck are you looking yeah. at? And, oh my God. And, and what it was, the entity within him yeah. had recognized that I'd seen it. Yeah. And it started getting pissed off with yeah. me. And so, uh, yeah. I used to see that too and people on buses like literally like in that movie I forget which but they, they live yeah 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 I, when I saw that I was like oh my god that's exactly how it is yeah that's exactly how it is yeah I mean it's quite well understood that in uh in the alternative media that many people have been saying for a long time that these uh, politicians or high level cult members whatever mm -hmm. you want have um have got entities working through them yeah. be it demonic reptilian whatever you want demiurge to call it. or even ai um probably a combination of of all of them on some level mm -hmm. um but what gets left out is that many everyday people have got entities working through them and um you know i, I see these in people sometimes mm -hmm. when i'm working on them and um what we know as uh, mental health issues, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. um, is just a really heavy entity attachment. Mm -hmm. The way they act through the person, I did um, a two part interview with a guy called Jerry Mazinski mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel. And he worked in uh, with uh, schizophrenic patients for 30 mm -hmm. years. And he's like, these are, the way they act, they all act the same, 100% entity attachment. Yeah. Um, and he was saying that the, we we talked about this in a group um did we talk about this yeah. in the group was it yeah. yeah and it's funny because now he's speaking about it and i don't feel anything in the energy like i can just sit here and i can you know la 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 but when we were in this group and he was talking about that guys the energy just went clack yeah remember that yeah yeah it yeah. was intense all of a sudden it was it got really yeah, yeah. They, they hate they, they hate being hate, exposed yeah. and um yeah there was some Maybe there was someone in the group. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. Yeah, there's, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, it can also depend who's there. there. Yeah, yeah. That, that can have an influence. But yeah, I, I've I've experienced that many times. Uh, I mean, I could write a book about the the interference that mm -hmm. 
you know, I have it with clients. They'll, if I can't see them straight away, like I'll book, they'll book a session with me and I can't see them for two weeks. Within that two weeks, they're losing their wallet. So they can't pay me. Their Skype's going down, their internet's going down. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's like, there's, there seems to be an upsurge in, in bad dreams. And, and I've even had someone tell me that, Tony, I was sitting there mm -hmm. and this voice came into my head, it wasn't mine, it said, cancel your session with yeah. Tony. And uh, they're they're very very they're very manipulative manipulative they're very sneaky they know your weak points they know mm -hmm. your trigger points they can really get involved in relationships but yeah. especially between two conscious people they, they their worst nightmare is two conscious people, people getting together in a loving harmonic re relationship and they will get in if you've got any subconscious wounds they will they will get in and turn the volume up. And so then you end up having these clashes and I've had them myself in, myself in the past. Um, I'd be sitting there and then all of a sudden I'll be triggered for no reason. I'd be like, what, what, where's that come from? Like, and I, like, I know it's them, but they will use, um, they will use our triggers against us in, in relationships. So B is, this is the other reason to, to do the inner work and the subconscious mm -hmm. work, because you don't want to be getting in a relationship and, yeah. they start using that against you but yeah. and they do they yeah. do they do they do and they bring you off your life purpose too your life track if you're feeling for example i should be doing this job or working this or becoming a healer or whatever all of a sudden you get slammed with bills and you have to take on all these other jobs and you can't do what it is that you really want to do because you have to pay off this and it's i've seen it so many times where it's just people are um and me too. I, I mean, it happened to me when back in 2012, 2013, and I was completely derailed, completely mm. derailed. I was in California at the time. I was having a great time. I was doing sessions, having workshops. I had friends that were really emotionally supporting me. And um, all of a sudden, um, I signed a TV contract as well. And the things I thought were going, you know, mm. like everything was was going forward all of a sudden mm -hmm. boom I lost everything I owned um, my child was taken from me basically mm -hmm. long complicated story had to go home to nothing had to then go back to Germany to get my child had to like do all these things that completely brought me off track of what I was actually going for and what was yeah what was supposed to happen yeah and it took me years to come back around again yeah years yeah. years yeah. yeah it's very common um because they they can see our future timelines so they they can tell what you know what your highest path is and mm -hmm. of course the, the worst thing for them is to have a healer in their power that's healing others and 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 that kind of thing because they don't want people healed mm -hmm. they, they a healed person anchors more light down into yeah. the world yeah. and um funny story actually well not funny for the person but i worked on someone uh, last week and she was involved in a car accident last year and um she's uh, she's having some psychotherapy and she's like it's not working tony i was like well you know i i, I also do some of that as well mm -hmm. and, and i was like what what's going on then when you see in this woman she's like basically she's telling me to pretend that the accident didn't happen <laughs> I'm like, you what? How does <laughs> I'm like, how much did she get paid for doing that? How many years at university did did that take for her to learn that? Yeah. And uh, this is what what we see in uh, with the pharmaceutical industry and and these kind of mainstream mm -hmm. modalities. They're ineffective. You know, they don't go where the true healing is. And uh, yeah, that astounded me, really. I mean, I knew it was bad, but... Um, that is pretty bad. Yeah, they don't want people healed. They don't want healers in their power. So because they can see our future timelines, pe uh, some people are more targeted than others mm -hmm. from birth, um, even to the point where they can bump souls into dysfunctional families. I feel, I feel, yeah, if I ever write, well, you probably could write a book. To, I don't know your story. Your yeah. Story, yeah, we never talked about that, but that, like, <laughs> yeah yeah so um essentially what happens is that um on a soul level you choose your parents mm -hmm. and you choose your parents based on who's gonna encourage your growth and, exactly. and nurture your talents right but um what they do via the astrological signs that's one 
you know, they can be used for good and bad. Mm -hmm. I don't want to demonize astrology yeah. um, because you can get some insights and, and understandings for it, mm -hmm. but they will, um, via your kind of birth chart, when you were born, they'll look at, right, okay, yeah, Carleen's going to be a threat. So, boom, we'll bump her into this uh, dysfunctional family where yeah. maybe the child experiences abuse or, you know, mm -hmm. narcissistic parenting and, and just whatever it may be. And so then what happens is the, the child or the, when, when the child grows into adulthood, maybe they turn to drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then maybe some end up suiciding or they spend a long, long time healing themselves, mm -hmm. that's, years healing. That's exactly it. I didn't do the drugs or alcohol, but the self-healing that just, and always self-worth issues, major. Yeah. Like, I know, like, I've worked hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you guys knew me from, like, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, it's it's not the Carlene you see here. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, good yeah. for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the subconscious belief system of not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy is, is one that... 99.9% .9 of the population has because I believe it's a it's part of the marketing gimmick yeah it's a collective um, wound in humanity as well because if you look at um, our history we've I mean we're a slave race right mm -hmm. at the moment so we've been beaten down we've been bullied we've been um, constantly to. told that we're not good enough we we're little me we've got no power so of course that program is going to be running very heavily in our subconscious and so it's um, it's no surprise that you had that and it's one that i've had to work through mm -hmm. as well myself and um yeah it's 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 a big problem because that that feeling of unworthiness um can hold you hold you back from living your greatest purpose because you're worried what people think about you mm -hmm. it can stop you from manifesting abundance abundance in not just financial abundance but abundance in love because if you've got a program that you're not worthy how mm -hmm. are you going to draw in abundance right yeah. the two don't go together so it's very important that people work um on those wounds to to kind of plug the holes there mm -hmm. and um, of course you know that ties into the the entity attachments because they will hook in on those wounds Absolutely. and if you've got a not feeling good enough wound or abandonment betrayal wound, whatever it might be They'll use that, they'll turn it up, they'll loop, mind loop things. Uh, and so it becomes so loud mm -hmm. in your mind that you're always kind of chasing your tail. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why energy work and the inner work, it's, it, it's, it's, they're both as important mm -hmm. as each other, really. Yeah, I think it's hard for people to, um, not anymore, but it used to be, maybe I need to amend that to to grasp energetic beings you know what i mean because you think you're in your mind by yourself you think you are your mind you have that thought mm. and um i think it's hard how can people how can we help people grasp the con the concept the understanding of energetic beings that work through the frequency of the mind let's say so that people recognize you know like what is me and what's coming from yeah. something else without falling into fear and then into these paranoid states you know <laughs> yeah 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 well it's the, the kind of thoughts uh, that are inorganic really the mm -hmm. you know you just be sitting there for no apparent reason and you know oh you're not good enough and you're not, you know just mm -hmm. just things like that i mean everyone has attachments some more than others and an actual fact and i don't know if you found this as well but the general consensus is see what's happening is they're one of their main ways and we've spoken about this before that they get in on people is they they hook in via the chakras mm -hmm. and so the chakras is like a if you imagine i don't even call chakras i don't all i see chakras as now is like a plug mm -hmm. so they lock in via the the chakras the seven chakras are actually corded to the seven rings of, of saturn as well oh wow so it's so they're they're actually part of this saturnial the saturnial, saturnial ma matrix, matrix saturn satan and and so you know this is where this matrix is being projected from and so the chakras keep us very much within that kind of construct mm -hmm. and and so it's also acting as a plug for these entities to kind of lock into our energy fields and so it becomes very easy for them to 
uh, mind loop and, and influence a person. And so one of the, 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 one of the main feedback that I get is once uh, they, that overlay has been removed is that your mind is a lot quieter. Mm. It's not like, like for me now, I, I don't, I don't have those constant mind loops. Me neither. Yeah. 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 And it's to have that peace of mind is, I mean, it's just priceless really. Mm -hmm. And um, it was one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this subject because it was so profound for me when I had that done, mm -hmm. you know, it went, it was like night and day, you yeah. know, I, I was unbelievably yeah. anxious and, and then the next morning, boom, all gone. Yeah. Like a, a cloud had been lifted. Yes. So I was like, I need to let people know about yeah. this. Because people think it's normal to have these mind loops. And they don't understand that peace of mind is what's normal. And yeah. That, you know? And so what you're left with is a, is just a quietness. Like you just don't get those inorganic thoughts I mean, they have other ways in as well. We've as we've spoken with the subconscious wounds. You know, they they'll use those against us, and particularly in dream time. And this is yes. the other thing I've noticed yes. as well. With with my dreams, the more inner work that I've done, um, I don't get touch wood bad dream. I can't remember the last bad dream <laughs> I had actually, and. Um, that's that's quite profound now whether that's the energy work or the inner work or both mm -hmm. i don't know but i do know that they use our subconscious wounds to project bad dreams or nightmares mm -hmm. and what they've done is they've overlaid the astral body as well and so um what's happening is people are going to sleep at night and they're having these bad dreams nightmares they don't always remember them and um these entities because they're locked in uh, are feeding on that fear and anxiety through mm -hmm. the night which is why you can sleep for 12 hours and you wake up feeling tired. like you've yeah. not slept at all so the other thing that people report is that they feel more rested mm -hmm. and they feel like they've slept and um, that's also certainly been the case with me as well um, so yeah they're very sneaky and um, you know this goes on without all the other interference with you know, we could talk all day about the um, the AI technology that's infused within our biological makeup as well, the mm -hmm. etheric AI, um, in terms of uh, the transhuman agenda, which is playing out here now, is already there in 4D, mm -hmm. as above, so below. So we have all this different hybrid technology and uh, bionic automated technology that's that's running through our our, bio, our biological system, system, which is also interfering with our thought processes, our discernment, and almost um, playing into this mind virus and the mind mm -hmm. mind control um, that's already kind of programmed into us. And uh, I think this is why you get such a reaction from people when you try and give them knowledge, the knowledge that's out much. of the media because you present it to, present it to them. They're okay. like you're mad yeah. like automatically it's almost like they're they're programmed and because yeah. they are programmed, they are programmed yeah. yeah um so there's a hell of a lot of of interference and um you know this is without other human mm. psychic energy you know a lot of people have a lot of other people's crap on them yeah um different forms of entities and uh thought form entities that you create yourself just yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you're constantly obsessive over something, you can actually create an entity which will stick on your energy field. Yes. Uh, and and uh, relationships, relationships are their own entity as well. And it has an agenda, it has a goal, it has a consciousness, it has desire, and it will trigger the people in the relationship to. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, we are under. And, and I always I always look at it from the other way because if you look at the, the, the amount of attack that we're under, mm -hmm. like in this dimension with the the food, the water, the air, the 5G, like you where do you end? It. You said it, now I'm gonna get my channel demonetized. <laughs> oh shit, sorry. Um, <sighs> oh shit, yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> You'll have to We're start. Warriors. Post, you'll have to start posting on my channel. However long that's going to be up for. Um, 
I've lost my train of thought. I'm now. sorry. No, no, yeah, it's okay. but how much attack? Oh, yeah, under, yeah. Like so, so we've various, got all that yeah. going on just in the physical domain. And then in the astral domain, in the fourth dimension, you've got all these entities, this AI technology, this uh, psychotronic weapons that, that are, uh, are out in the, in, in the astral, um, false white light beings like false god. Uh, and so we are bombarded from all areas. And the reason we're bombarded is because we're so fucking powerful. Yes. We are so powerful. Yeah. They are, they are, these, these beings are terrified. Yeah. Terrified of us yeah. remembering who we truly sure are. We are. Terrified. It's their worst nightmare. And their worst nightmare is us remembering that we're sovereign beings mm -hmm. and we are. Uh, that's why they keep us focused on the material too, on the physical, on our bodies, on everything that's around us. So we don't realize the power that we have. Because if you can step away from identifying yourself with every concept that crosses your brain and you realize that this, this experience, right, mm. is, is an experience of an awareness and that is your truth. Yeah. Um, you can just switch your consciousness however you choose and have experiences however you choose, manifest whatever you choose and nothing and no one can limit you or have any no. control over you. No. It, it, it's because you're not attached to it. You're not fused with it. But you're that's not. why they want to box your consciousness up because that that means you're limited. Like yes. you say, you've got limitation. You take away those boxes, suddenly you're, you, you've got all potential there. Mm -hmm. And that that's how powerful and, and wonderful we really are. I mean, our creative abilities are, you know they're, they're jealous of us they're, they're they're insanely jealous of us they they hate us for our abilities they hate us for who we are how we are embodying that universal energy within us and they want us to believe that any power we have is through them mm -hmm. that's the that's the deception, of it, all. deception of it all and so that's why people stay attached to and um back when i was also um learning through shaman shamanistic shamanic healing practices um we had to learn to ask if we were allowed to remove this entity and um not because not ask uh, well ask god yes but also the higher self of the person because some people they weren't ready for the removal because they were so on a subconscious level, they believed that that's where their power, they got their power from. Mm. And they'd either call the entity back to them because mm. they wouldn't all of a sudden, they lost the purpose in life. They lost the vision for life. They lost, you know, everything. Or they'd um, call a different one, even bigger, mm. or they'd just totally zone out of life, like yeah. not be able to connect to anything anymore because they couldn't make something up from themselves. Yeah. What they've done here in this, uh, in this reality is they've made it so kind of difficult like in in many ways unenjoyable mm -hmm. right um i i say that it's uh, a a reality that's built on conditional love mm -hmm. and m most people are so far that's detached deep. from that, un that unconditional is... love boom like yeah just think about that one for a second yeah. yeah yeah so so everything what what's happening is everyone's running around chasing conditional love highs mm -hmm. which are obviously very temporary and um, not fulfilling not long lasting um you know you may experience unconditional love from your parents maybe but if you're lucky <laughs> yeah but apart from that maybe your, your dog um animals mm -hmm. uh, are very good but uh, we we've come so far away we we're, we're and what's happened because they've created this like quick fix conditional love um uh, we've become addicted to conditional mm. love this distorted form of love has is, is become addicted to us addictive to us um and so we crave it more and more even though there's a deep yearning for something more we don't mm. really understand what we're yearning for and um so it, it They've, they've created a very harsh reality um, that we've got. Um, we're, we're kind of trauma bonded to. Yeah. We have this this uh, toxic relationship with with uh, conditional Everything. love. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah. So, so just coming, bringing it back round and reconnecting with the heart and Mother Earth as well. You know, mm -hmm. she's she's our true mother. How many people actually stop to think? You know 
what she provides. Yes. We've got roof over our head, we've got food, the clothes on our back, everything. Um, you know, she's a conscious being. Yeah. And, uh, and there are people on this planet right now that have never lived outside of a city, never gone outside of a city, never walked in nature, took hikes. They just grew up, went to school, got a job, and it's all city life mm. it is is mind-blowing to me because how do you fix that mm. you know like that'll cause mental disturbances too which attract entities which la 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 so how do you even get them to be interested in nature or real life real life qualities of living out in nature yeah well like you say i mean we, we we've completely become disconnected, disconnected and by design you know they they what they've done is they've got us addicted to technology mm -hmm. and um you know you see it with the kids now like my own family my own niece and nephew it's like i go around there and they're on games or they're and it's sad because it's like they couldn't they couldn't probably tell you the local the names of the local birds and stuff mm -hmm. in the area it's uh I was thinking about that too, that we're creating a new world in a sense. Is this the evolution of consciousness to create another jail? You know, because like the virtual reality, eventually it's going to be to the point where we're all living in it. Mm -hmm. So, and that becomes our reality. And that's the new reality, not this one anymore. And so our consciousness moves into this realm. And is that the natural cycle of things? Is that the way we're supposed to go? I don't, I, I, I don't want to say I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't feel it. No, it's I don't definitely, feel it. <laughs> it's definitely not the natural cycle. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely not. But um, what I will say is that there are a number of people, thank God, um, that are bringing a lot of awareness to the topics that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just like yourself, providing this space to, to put this podcast on and, and other people that are doing amazingly wonderful things right now that um, you wonder whether or not the, the glitches in the matrix are, are kind of, you know, our times here and, uh, you know, hopefully we can trigger that remembrance in people of who they yeah. really are and what they really are. And, you um, yeah. Once we do that, you, you then step out of fear. And um, we were talking off air, like mm -hmm. I was just saying, like things are so crazy right mm -hmm. now everywhere, but I feel like I feel really balanced. I feel mm -hmm. really kind of centered and, and good. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know what that, what that is, but. It's all gonna be okay. In because the end, you're, in, you're in touch with your authentic self. This is all just experience. Yeah. And so. Maybe that's where that's coming from. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I don't know either. It was. Uh, it's. It's strange, but um, uh, I think. I think. We kind. I think on a collective level, I think what's happening here now is to challenge us. Mm -hmm. I think we knew this when we first came. Yes. Uh, many many eons ago, and I think. What we're going through is um, a really steep learning curve mm -hmm. and almost like the co consciousness trying to understand itself in, mm -hmm. in its most extreme, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that complete disconnection from the universe, from who we really are, from unconditional love. I, th mm -hmm. I think we, we did at some point agree to experience that on some level maybe it got a bit out of hand mm -hmm. maybe it's gone on too long i don't know that's what i'm feeling into mm -hmm. um but that that polarization is something that we uh we we are, i believe agreed to on so in a way it's kind of we're playing out this game so to speak and we're going to come out the other end i think eventually reconnected yeah. um i think you can only hold consciousness down for so long before there's it light at the end of remember the it's yeah. consciousness so and we're seeing it around the world like for all the the, the 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 horrific stuff that's going on now you look at all the protests around the world like australia london what do you see coming for the 
U.S. end of the year because I mean there's so many horrible predictions with food shortages, civil war. It's like bam, 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 and I'm wondering is that a kind of programming too? Is that what they want? Because they've infiltrated so much. It's like enough now. Mm. <laughs> and um, I I don't see it. But what do you see? I don't um, see it. <laughs> well, U.S. obviously is on the front line of things, similar mm -hmm. to Australia, and it would be naive and almost bypassing to say well, they're going to be fine and everything's yeah. going to yeah. be dandy you know they've they've i mean we're at war we're all at war we're at the moment war already, it's spiritual yeah. war it's quiet weapons for silent war and you know this mm -hmm. the won't say it again but you know that's all being rolled out apparently as well um i've also heard that some of those towers are blowing up and i'm not sure whether that's because of the frequencies not mm -hmm. matching now or something um I think it all relies on us. I think um, I think any kind of great transformation you'll know in your own life, and and I certainly realised it in my own life too that you have to go through things. And yes. There has to be kind of an element of you know sometimes it hurts a bit to come out the other end, but you come out and you you learn from it and you you don't go back mm -hmm. and. There's a lot of people out there for all the awakened ones out there. There's, there seems to also be a lot of people that kind of like it this way. Yep. You know, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they're having a go at people that are not wearing masks and stuff like yeah. that. And you just wonder whether, you know, some of those people might need a bit more of a kick up the backside, mm -hmm. spiritually speaking, before things change. Because yeah. people have to suffer first sometimes to realize oh, I'm on the wrong path mm -hmm. here. And so you, you know, can see that in Germany because I mean there are two million people in Germany they said that went out on the streets and I mean there are doctors, lawyers, courts that granted um, permission for these protests to happen in Germany. The media didn't pick it up when they did. They said it was like twenty thousand people, but it wasn't. Mm. And um, because Germany's been through it, mm. they've been through it. Like they had their little experiments in world war ii and so they recognize all the signs this is like a classic thing we're yeah. not doing it anymore we're yeah. not we're not having it yeah it's in their dna yeah yeah for sure but everybody else is like oh my god yeah, <laughs> yeah um and some sometimes you look at people and you think do you know what you probably deserve a little bit of a kick up the backside yeah. so i think it very much depends on us i think um i think at the end we, we're going to get there in the end mm -hmm. but i do think that how but do you see a civil war coming to america in november <laughs> after the elections 2020 um, oh god what do i see I what see. am i feeling into i'm feeling into i don't think they're going to get everything that they want yeah i think the, the american population still armed they've been trying to disarm them for many years now they've managed to hold on to their guns mm -hmm. and that's a huge plus um i do feel that too many people are giving trump way too much credit way mm -hmm. too much power um a lot of the patriots there are um we've spoken about this before mm -hmm. you know they're kind of sitting back and and just letting trump do the work quote, unquote, <laughs> deal with things it's, it's like a savior program that's that's going on there that yeah. that worries me greatly because I've, I mean, authority, it, it, it's, we should be, we should be paying no credence to it anyway. And government, you never look at government to solve government. Mm -hmm. It never happens. And the idea that this guy is coming at the 11th hour with this cult right at the very time when they're just about to drop the, the hammer, yeah. it, it's, it just, I mean, he's, he's very charismatic as, as they would need him to be. He's actually quite funny sometimes, actually makes me laugh sometimes. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he's just uh, he's just playing a role in which he's making it out that everyone's against him. But when you look at the actions and, and how many people are suiciding and the food shortage and the we won't mention it being rolled out, which mm -hmm. he signed off, um, you've got to look at his actions and, and say, you know, we need to look at him for what he is, not what we want him to be. And um, even the Bible talks about it. I'm not religious. They said that there will be a false prop prophet that will uh, that will deceive millions of, mm -hmm. of Christians. And, and I just I've always felt it's him. It's just way too many, even in alternative media. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to think that he's safe if he comes good and you know I, I'm wonderful my first, it, but... I'm the first to take my yeah. hold my hands up but 
it's it's too polarized a figure for you to be able to say okay yeah it's yeah nice. and what would we have learned yeah you nothing. know if, if, if somebody if, else does if it, we yeah. are if if we agreed to this um on a on a higher level that mm -hmm. we would come here we would experience this extreme uh, polarity and uh, disconnect and what and and the eventual game would be that humanity eventually realizes its own power and stands up to tyranny and you know realizes that it, it controls mm -hmm. where it goes um as a species what would be the point for, for trump just to come in and save everyone it's like yeah. it's what almost it's almost like what, what have we learn like all oh, right okay so we're just we're going to continue to put put our faith in politicians yeah. then and authority yeah we learn nothing. That's exactly what I'm thinking is happening. Is is um, is I read somewhere two things. Number one, um, I was I was wondering if you think it's a distraction him going after all these um, human trafficking and so on and so forth, or if he's really interested. And you're like, okay, the I guess guy, the guy was touching <laughs> up his own daughter a few years ago. Oh we God. had this discussion off air yeah, the other we day. Did, we did. We did. <laughs> Yeah. I'm triggering Tony yeah. on purpose here. Trump always triggers me. I need to work on my Trump's, Trump's subconscious wound. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, like, where's the evidence that all these kids are being it's saved? It's yeah. like, it, it's slowly coming out in the media. And the yeah, news, but, but uh, Liv, if it's coming out in the media, is it, he, didn't, is it true? he didn't put himself out there as a savior. Like, he didn't say, I'm here to save the world. I mean, he's clearly not. Like, when we talk about environment and environmental issues, right? I still have my issues with him. He's all for fracking he's for all these other things but um, yeah, what, what what person that's on the side of humanity would be for fracking I know, it's I come know, on it's I like know, I know, I know. you know we, we yeah. have to we have to like but maybe see what's people happening are perfect you no, know and no, you gotta you gotta run with what's yeah. what's there kind of thing. what's Work happened with what with, you got what's happened with trump <laughs> is that people have got scared people have got very scared yeah. because it is scary and they've gone, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. They're not trusting humanity because look at the state of us. And here's a guy saying a few good things. Let's go over there. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we, we have to be careful not to, I'm not saying you got caught up in that trap, but um, we've got to be careful that we we just hold our ground. So hang on a yeah. minute. We've been Let's down this road before. before. Uh, when have politicians ever sorted our problems out? Hmm. Mm never <laughs> and that was the that was the second thing you brought up um the second thing that i wanted to say was that i read somewhere that they're doing this on purpose everything that's happening all these burning cities all these riots and everything it's driving people to go red first of all right if they're really into that and into politics and stuff like that so why is that happening number one number two um i read that they're actually demoralizing people. They're getting people uninterested in democracy by putting up two people that are unvotable. Like mm. you can't vote for either one. Mm. And people are realizing that democracy is a sham, which is exactly what they want to have happen because they're going to bring up this new form. The one right? world government. Exactly, yeah. where this is going to save the day. This yeah. is the way we need to um, evolve into. This is the next step. This is yeah. the next way to go. And people will be like, okay, because they don't believe in democracy anymore and they'll yeah. see the solution in that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd never thought of it like that, but for sure they've got it's two. It's such a deep, huge manipulation. They've got two clowns. I mean, we've got clowns in the UK. I mean, you look yeah. at uh, Boris Johnson's like a clone of Trump. I mean, he even looks like him a little bit, just these <laughs> these, these buffoons. But but what they do is they, ha they have these politicians that are always buffoon-like because yeah. what they are are sounding boards for the public's disharmony and and you know if you've got these clowns then the, the public the public can just shout and holler and, and they take all the crap whereas the cult slowly mm -hmm. underneath the surface is pushing the agenda pushing the, pushing agenda. the agenda and these puppets are taking all the abuse yeah. and society is creeping closer and closer and closer to a total technocratic slate enslavement mm -hmm. system um and meanwhile everyone thinks they're doing something about it by sh by shouting at, at politicians mm -hmm. and it's just a circus it's a pantomime mm -hmm. and and so even even their racial divide um because while you were saying that all of a sudden popped into my mind we talked about that too there's this artificial racial division that they've implanted in people right because most people i know like the, there are 
it's such a big topic. I shouldn't even have stepped on that mine, but whatever. Anyways, but um, you, you divide up into model minorities, right? And then the minorities that you don't want to be. <laughs> and funnily enough, if you really look at the minorities that they have as the mm minorities, these are earth conscious. They, they have a sense of family, community, connectedness, um, joy, happiness, um, emotions, emotional feelings are really big in these, these kind of cultures. And the other ones, the model minorities, they tend to be very future oriented and focused, let's put it that way, because I don't want to, you know, I have to be careful here. <laughs> and um, very future oriented and focused and very um, assimilated, you know, and very easy to, to control. Right, mm. very understanding and and giving and forgiving of all these technocratic steps that are leading us into a certain type of society. And so you put them up and you say, okay, these are the models, and you push that one, and it's all the easier to then try and change a culture according to what the my, model minority has been living the mm. past couple of years. It's 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 fascinating when you're standing on the sidelines and watching this whole manipulation play out, and people fall for it yeah. because it's in their freaking subconscious. It's yeah. programmed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've said it so many times. I, I hate what they're doing, but you have to tip your hat at, at how they've done it. Magnificent and, work. I mean, <laughs> gotta uh, say. Yeah, in, in both dimensions, you know, they, they, they've really, the thing is, they understand us so, so well. Mm -hmm. Like they've studied us, they know our psychology, they know our psyche, they know what buttons to press. You know, even in the astral, like if you've got a weakness, they will. If you've got a habit, they'll they'll go for it. You know, mm. you've got a big ego, they'll. they'll oh, you're a channeler of this wonderful information, and you know, it's it's <laughs> like they 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 really play into all our weaknesses on on every level, and um, they have to because we're so we're so powerful, we're so brilliant. Mm. And another thing that I want to point out is that. What they've done over a, a number of years is demonize humans. Like we've now become a, a, almost, or we see ourselves as a virus on this yeah, planet. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And this is, this is, I mean, don't get me wrong. We have prob we do have our problems. Absolutely. But this is our home. We were placed here. And I mean, our consciousness is a reflection of a greater consciousness that knows what it's doing. Yeah, exactly. It's conscious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when my understanding is it in it with this is that when, when earth chose to experience this, uh, this experience, this, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, galaxy, this universe, this she she was so beautiful. She is so magnificent in her in her creations. I mean, just look outside your window, right? Mm -hmm. the, just the, the array of wildlife and nature and the oceans and the sky mm -hmm. and the you, you just have to stand back in awe and appreciate appreciate her sometimes and you realize how much you take her for granted mm -hmm. but at the same time there from what i understand there was an agreement that there had to also be a very special being that would work with mm -hmm. her in terms of uh, symbiosis and harmony mm -hmm. and that being was a human being right wow. and so what's That's very agnostic what we're saying by the way it's yeah very, but yeah. but then what's happened in this is this virus has come in this demiurge or however you want to refer it to distorted us and mind controlled us and got us acting and behaving in ways that which are completely unnatural mm -hmm. and so we've become so far away far apart from from who and what we truly are which is far from a virus we we have to stop looking at ourselves i mean you speak to people oh yeah there's too many humans here yeah we're this we need to be what I mean, I've even had thoughts like that sometimes myself, you know, those are the artificial yeah, thoughts. Because yeah, who thinks like that? <laughs> but, but what we need to look at is that, yeah, we, we have our issues. And part of our issues is, is this dark force that has mm -hmm. taken over us. But in our truth, in our true nature, in our elevated state of consciousness, where we are working symbiotically with the earth, we understand the ebbs and her f ebbs and flows, her natural cycles, because that's how we used to. And it was particularly the female that used to, because Earth herself is, a, is the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. And so the females are very connected with the with the Earth. You know, you hear it sometimes where there's been an earthquake or some mm -hmm. kind of upheaval. 
a lot of the time the women would also feel it yeah. so the women are experiencing a lot of what the earth is experiencing mm -hmm. in terms of her pain and her children here are being tortured basically mm -hmm. and so we, we we have to stop looking at ourselves as some kind of dirty virus that shouldn't be here and need to be wiped out because that's what they want us to believe mm -hmm. we have to go back to remembering who we truly are and another thing i'd say about the women as well <laughs> um is, is all this moon worshiping that you mm. see in the new age um <laughs> the, the moon yeah. the moon is uh basically uh, a death star that was bought here many many years ago they, they even put it right in star wars in the trilogy yeah they put it and we don't yeah well it. what it's doing is the moon is causing uh, upheaval in the oceans which yes. is the earth's emotional body, body. in the water yes. right and so this reflects into the earthly the humans, humans which is why women have such a the hard time mm -hmm. with times of the month and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff because they're also experiencing this and intense people can't control their emotions around a full moon yeah it's like their emotions override their thinking and, and they yeah yeah so so this yeah. this is intensified so so the earth herself is her emotional body is being manipulated by the moon and the same goes for the mm -hmm. the earthly human uh, women as well and and so it's very very challenging extremely challenging to, i wouldn't know right now but <laughs> but being a woman because you're you're constantly being messed with um and so all this moon worship in the new age has got to stop right mm -hmm. all this oh it's a full moon or it's a harvest moon or blood moon it doesn't matter this thing <laughs> is manipulating our mother gaia oh and it's God. manipulating our females on yeah. the planet and it literally is serves as an amplifier from this matrix that's been projected from Saturn, amplified via the moon. So it, it hits us even harder. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, I mean, I've got a book called um, Who Built the Moon? Mm -hmm. I'm reading it at the moment. But the chances of the moon being where it, should, where it is mm. are like, billions yes. billions to, to one i mean the odds are ridiculous yes and uh, so the, the actual position of the moon is is crazy and uh so we have to stop all this kind of moon worship i, stuff. I read an article um i'll post it in the description box below too about scientists finding rust on the moon and their explanation for rust on the moon remember rust um happens through oxygen oxygenation of a metal Mm. Yes. And um, so it's pretty earthly to have rust. Mm. And they're saying that there's rust on the moon because the winds of the earth carried the rust to the moon. Right. Just stop and think about that. Yeah. <laughs> the winds of the earth carried the rust to the moon. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's crazy it's, it's it really is i mean again it's so so genius how they've got people to but we believe it you know people yeah. are going to be believing that and um yeah just just so how do we deal with all this you know how do you keep yourself safe at night let's start with something simple just don't how do i keep myself safe from all this radiation this astral radiation mental radiation yeah. all this manipulation that's going on in my consciousness so i can just have a peaceful sleep because a lot of people are thinking oh my god you know i wake up at two or three in the morning i'm talking to my highest self to my guide and i'm like no check the chinese organ clock maybe you've got something going on in your inner organs first you know what are you waking up with maybe there's unresolved anger but then there's also people being radiated yeah right? there's, and there's being there's entities coming in and stuff and uh I mean, it's such a it's such a far-reaching question because there's yeah, there's so changed. much that we should be doing. I mean, let's be honest, none of us are doing all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're human, and like, you you try and do what you can. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely, you know, inner work is key to to, to all of this, and 
gut health, physically. The, the, the you do inner child work too. How does that tie in for you? Because that's a really important part of your work as well. It's just as important because, uh, I mean, the energetic work that I do is, is great because it removes all the interference, the, the voice that's telling you to go left when you should be going right. Um, you know, obviously we've spoken about the chakras. There's more mm. than the chakras is just a tiny part of, of everything else that gets removed. Um, so what that will do is it will, it will clear the decks in terms of your energy. So you're able to, it's not going to, it's not a magic wand. It's not going to take your problems away, but it will make it much easier to deal with it. So you'll have much more clarity of mind. And uh, like we said before, your thoughts are more your own. Um, but then the inner work, um, which is uh, based on a, a modality called IFS, which stands for internal family systems, um, which goes on the basis that within us, we all have different parts and protectors that make up who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and these have their extreme positive roles and they have their extreme negative roles. And because most of us haven't done any inner work, particularly men, I'm trying to encourage, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the, the, these protectors can take up a more extreme role. Um, so, for example, there was once upon a time where I had a very extreme defensive role. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't take criticism very well. Um, this was born out of things that happened to me in my childhood. So my subconscious created this protector, this defensive mm -hmm. protector, because I was being attacked mm -hmm. in, in, in one way or another. And so that served me well in childhood. But as you grow up, you know, having trying to have relationships and, you know, working with people and stuff, that defensive role didn't didn't wasn't great. Right. Mm -hmm. So so then when you work on that, you, you can change that uh, extreme role to where it, instead of becoming defensive, it becomes more open. It becomes open to criticism. It welcomes criticism. Mm -hmm. And so you become more empowered and you, that obviously takes away the trigger as mm -hmm. well. Right. So it removes the trigger of when you when someone's saying something you don't like, you don't take it as an attack. Mm -hmm. So the trigger goes, but it also we, re we revisit what I call the holographic imprint that's stuck in time and space of the trauma from when that protector was created. So at some point in my childhood, that protector felt the need to come in because there was a, a, an aspect of me, an inner child of me that was, was in trauma. Mm -hmm. And so by going back working with that inner child, changing that holographic imprint, giving the child what it needs, mm -hmm. in my case, he needed. Maybe you move him to another place or, you know, via the your subconscious. Um, you're changing that holographic imprint that's stuck in time and space. And so as you change those um, aspects of self, um, because every exiled part of you holds um, a piece of essence, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you can integrate yourself and integrate your uh, inner world, the, the more essence that you hold and the more, again, that you kind of anchor down onto the, onto the planet. And the offshoots as, as well are, you know, you don't get interfered with as much, your dreams are better, you stop attracting the same people and experiences mm -hmm. into your life. It's like, oh my God, why have I, some, <laughs> why have I attracted that person that abandoned, abandoned me again? Yeah. Well, that's because you're running a theme in your subconscious yeah. of, of, you know, from childhood you were abandoned. So you're going to draw in people and experiences that abandon you. So you stop drawing in the same kind of experiences into your life. So the outward, the outside manifestation of your life changes and you become a master of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. The big one we spoke about before was the, the um, not feeling good enough wound, yep. you know. So that yeah. ties into, as I said before, like the manifestation of things that you want in your life because mm -hmm. suddenly you subconsciously you feel good enough mm -hmm. and so you find that more abundance comes into your life and it's just on autopilot. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it's not an overnight thing for sure, but if you're committed it, to it, you're absolutely right about the autopilot, because, um, I always wondered, even as a child, if I'm praying to an all knowing God, why do I have to tell him? I, wouldn't he know that? No, beforehand? you're praying to a right? false God. <laughs> wouldn't he know that beforehand that this is going to happen and then just put the money on the table for me, for example, or anything, you know, but it, it, it's, it's yeah. exactly as you said, no, no, all you're doing you when you're, that, when yeah. you're praying or asking for something or 
it, it's almost imagine it's like begging mm -hmm. it's almost like that needy begging energy i mean look at the word pray what's yeah. pray pray is, pray pray upon yeah, yeah. pray upon it, it's telling you that when you pray you're giving your power away mm -hmm. so don't ever pray mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know you have much that, better to command well, you need to remember yeah command mm -hmm. remember that you have that that to which you're praying mm -hmm. within you you are it you are it yes. or you have a fracture oh yeah fracture. fracture yeah uh and so um but of course if you're running the theme of not feeling good enough externalizing not it's, it's, that energy yeah, yeah. it's like uh, you have to do the work to to change the mm -hmm. the movie i i call it instead of shouting at the movie going behind at the projector level mm -hmm. doing the work there then the movie changes and so we're actually um way way more <laughs> Uh, in control than what we think it's just we don't think to go to the subconscious levels of where we're creating from um and the problem is is that in healing circles there is so much crap out oh there God. you know things like self-affirmations um loads of the stuff in within the new age mm -hmm. mainstream we've we've touched on there's no healing to be found there so finding the right modalities is part of the problem and so the, the the ifs one was again first-hand experience for me I, it was it was the most potent and mo most direct um and and now like you know I, very rarely do i get triggered by things mm -hmm. these days um if i do i know that there's a layer that's coming up so for example what really triggered me was when we first went into lockdown mm -hmm. i mean i i could i could because the more you do it the more you mm -hmm. you can see it, right there's something coming up because when we went into lockdown it was like being bullied right mm -hmm. and so i was bullied when i was a kid that mm -hmm. was that was one of my things i've done so much work around it and uh but th there was clear i could feel almost like my chest had been ripped open i was like there's a huge wound for me to get into there and so i did some work around that and you know that's kind of gone now so um so yeah you'll get to, you get to a point where nothing really bothers you or phases you you're, you're very you're able to quick um quickly um, process things so if events happen in your life or things un unexpected maybe someone dies or someone leaves or you know you you're not there for months because right. all your inner child all your inner children are in a happy place anyway because yeah. you've changed them they're, they're all my ones are in the park, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, my, my childhood park. Um, I've got another aspect of myself that's on a desert island. Being a, being a kid, <laughs> like he's he's out climbing the trees and stuff. On his little <laughs> but but that 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 oh, that uh, uh, was the, the traumatized version of him was crying. He, mm. he was like you know he was still upset, and so he's now somewhere else in that there's an island having a whale of a time so so that the, all the inner me's are happy, not all of them this I, I wouldn't sit here and say i'm completely healed but i'm what i'm saying is there's a lot of me is uh, my inner ch children mm. are in happy places now yeah. and so it's so important because it represents also the creative aspect of yourself and if it's caught up in trauma and recreation of trauma and trying to understand grasp control trauma instead of just doing what you came to do yeah <laughs> it's so energy robbing yeah but what we do is um what society has us do is we have all these i mean we live in willy wonka's chocolate factory yeah, of, of stuff that <laughs> we can get involved in you know drink alcohol drugs whatever mm -hmm. and so what we do is we uh paper over or we plaster over our wounds with these external things that are often even more detrimental because you start drinking a lot of alcohol, you, you start taking a lot of drugs, you then opening yourself to more entity interference mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then you kind of plummet even further. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very good at providing us with all these toys distractions. and distractions to, because yeah. they know that, they know that we're all in trauma. So here's alcohol, here's drugs, here's, yeah. you know, so, so you know, we, we, we just have to, we have to do the work, you know. Somebody asked here, um, Tara, what advice do you have for those who feel genuinely connected to the moon? And because again, you know, it's like the chakras. So it's, it's, it's 
Um, people have experience, legitimate experiences with these. So, things. so genuine, a genuine connection would be would mm -hmm. could be what I would describe as like a false high. Uh, you know, this this uh, a lot of what's in this false god matrix is providing very temporary highs, very temporary ups, and you know it, you feel like there's an external force that's helping you mm -hmm. uh, again it, it's almost like a, another savior program because if you're relying on the moon to provide you things and and you know that those kind of rituals then again you're you're it's under further... you're underestimating your own power you're externalizing your own power so i would suggest that that connection may may be to do with a feeling that the moon is providing you with something that you can't yourself provide with um and but i would what i would i mean what i would really say is probably want to try and disconnect from it really mm, um, something else. i mean everyone's welcome to to make their own decisions and and do what they want to do but essentially the moon is it's inorganic it's not natural it's it's there to manipulate it's mm. uh, uh the, the, this is a this is a lady yeah tara yes, yes. yeah tara you know this the, the moon is is messing with your monthly cycles and ex making them a whole lot worse so maybe that's why you feel a connection to the moon mm. uh, actually that's a good point because maybe that connection with your with the cycles there is that there there is that connection but it's an artificial connection mm -hmm. so it's the same thing with i read somewhere and i wish i could remember where i read it but women aren't supposed to have pain during childbirth no. we're not supposed to experience pain during childbirth we're not supposed to experience pain during our monthly um actually we're not even supposed to have a monthly yeah 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 <laughs> that's a, you know like that that we're supposed to be able to procreate on desire intention yeah actually yeah. and not on this be be chained enslaved to a certain cycle of procreation yeah right? absolutely i agree and even the way that i mean i'm no expert this is just what i've read which resonates me is that the way that we or we women have birth children they have with the women laying on their back when yeah. actually the the women should be squatting yeah and, and not only that and now they're not only having them on their back now they're having a mouth mask yeah i'm like cannot can people not see how how i'm gonna say it flat out crazy this is yeah. it yeah. is crazy it is absolutely so life defying life denying female denying it is it can't get any more misogynistic than that it can't no no it's yeah it is so clear that this is a consciousness an entity that is against the earth and against feminine, my, feminine, feminine energy, energy yeah yeah absolutely it, it hates the divine feminine because the divine feminine is a creative force mm. in this you know in this arena that we're operating in so of course that that's a direct threat to this false god mm. right because the false god wants to be seen as the creator the god right? right the god that everyone prays to the god that everyone worships yes. right the god of life which the is real life god is the real god here is is the divine feminine the earth and mm -hmm. uh, and and uh the the females here well so. and women are so like i'm sorry but so many women are so off track so off track oh my god yeah. and um it's not their fault there's no like but it's 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 another video another day we'll yeah, talk about the I divine mean, feminine divine masculine yeah Next topic. absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean both men and women are so far from from mm -hmm. where they should be and, and what they should be i mean females have been masculated men have been feminized yeah. so we have that inversion and and that kind of dynamic playing out right now which uh, is very toxic and everyone's confused and uh, men are frustrated because women aren't in their feminine and females mm -hmm. are frustrated because men aren't in their masculine. But they can't be if, if the water is so toxic and the foods with all the additives and steroids and yeah. antibiotics and estrogen in the water and like it's so much, but one step at a time. Yeah. And um, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And you have all the. the and I, I keep thinking about Paramahansa Yogananda. I don't know what you think of him, but he wrote this book. Uh, he was the one that brought yoga to America. So I'm pretty sure I know what you think of him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he wrote this book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. Right. And in it, he talked about one of his gurus. And this guru was um, he, everywhere he went in India. And this was an old style guru who was given milk as an honor. And one of the followers wanted to test this guru and gave him milk laced with poison. And apparently the guru drank it anyways, survived the poison because he was in tune with himself and the universe. So nothing is really poisonous. Mm. And he could control what it did in his system. And um, he turned to the man after about a week and said to him, I know that you tried to poison me, but I thank you for this opportunity to express the beauty and the wonder and the nature of life. Mm. And um, that life reigns supreme. And I yeah. think we, yeah. we're going to, yeah, love and light, rule, win. <laughs> yeah, true light, not false yes. God light. Yes, yeah, yes. And, and we have to remember that we have to stop discrediting ourselves and, mm -hmm. and thinking small. You know, we it's time to stop thinking small. It's time to stop thinking we're just humans. You know, we, we humans are, if we even knew the half, I, like, I feel it, like, I I don't know why I've always felt it. It's like, come on, like, remember, let's, let's remember, like, Wake who up. we are, what we are, <laughs> you know, stop looking for outside validation and outside saviors. Um, you know, it's not to say that you can't, like, if my electrics break down, I'm going to call an electrician or Absolutely. something. But if your bone breaks, yeah, of course I you're mean, going to you know, go to the there's, doctor. There's certain, but... certain people have different things they bring mm -hmm. to the table, but my whole point is that you know this who's going to save us we're going to save us exactly and if we can all just realize that then we, we could end this tomorrow. you know and and we could end this tomorrow by just not playing along yeah. can you imagine the entire world just saying you know we're done with this and we're done with it we're done with it just leave us alone just do your thing and just turning around and ignoring them completely and doing something else i think we're going to go back to that it's just how much suffering we have to go to through yeah. i think yeah. All right, you guys, thank you, Tony. Thank you so, so much. It's always a pleasure. I love doing videos. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. going there. And um, Tony, as I said, is offering readings at special rates for you guys that are watching here. Not so, so much readings. Um, se healing sessions, I'm yeah. sorry. Energy <laughs> healing sessions. And he'll so help you, assist you in releasing attachments, entity overlays, implants, you name it, anything in that direction and also help you with your inner child work. And guys, he's offering this at rates that are, wow, like $70 for an inner child session. Um, and you've heard him, you've heard him multiple times. So, and you can feel him. I know a lot of you guys are also intuitive yourself and it's time to get to work. It really is time to get to work, time to get to work. And um, so take it, take advantage of it, use it, do it connect with him. Um, I fully stand behind him. He's worked with me. I only work with people that I trust <laughs> and I trust him 100%. So I'm super happy and I'm run out of words. So I'm just going to stop right here. <laughs> no, thanks but for having thank me you. on. And uh, thanks for uh, for your listeners to listen in to me ramble on and stuff. No, and, uh, it's, it's important. And it's important to hear other perspectives. You know, I think we've lost this art of listening to other perspectives and it doesn't mean that you have to jump on our perspective mine or his or whatever but just being open to different viewpoints different concepts and remembering that it's 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 you know playing playing just playing with it it's okay <laughs> tony thank you so much oh my god i get it wrong <laughs> all righty and never let anybody take that away from you Anybody, anybody, we are physical humans as well. And um, we can't be separated by one and a half feet. Like it's just not gonna, this is not gonna fly. But that's a whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye you guys, bye. take care, bye. Oops, wrong click. <laughs>